Second thing that they asked, they said, well, I'm not going to sit down and prepare an hour meal every day if that's what it's going to take. You know, that's why somebody's going to do a TV dinner or a microwave something or other. So we need to show them ways that they can produce healthy meals. That is the crux of this clinic program. We're also going to tie this into the food stamps, the food stamp program. Now, there's all kinds of information out there on the number of people that have increased, uh, gone onto the rolls of the food stamp program um, over the past couple of years with the economic downturn. So it's gone up by several million people that are in the food stamp program. I believe what we can do with this program here is tie in the food stamp program. So as people are receiving their food stamps, they can take classes or clinics right there or they can receive the literature that introduces them to the classes and clinics that are available to them within walking distance of their home or if they're in an urban area that they could take public transportation to. So they're going to get themselves to these clinics, receive the information on healthy eating, healthy cooking, and getting all the exercise that they need on a daily basis. Funding is the next step. So we're going to be saving money on medical insurance costs. We're going to be saving money on treating these diseases by avoiding them with healthy eating habits and a whole lot of exercise. And almost everybody agrees that that's, that's what we can do. So we're going to be saving money there. That's going to be saving money from the federal government, let's say if they're boosting up Medicare to, and, and Medicaid programs to uh, get insurance to people that are uninsured. Well, it's going to save money across the board on these medical insurance costs for, the, for these diseases. That saved money can be pumped into this particular program here with these clinics. Let's talk a little bit more specifically about these clinics and how it's going to work. Okay. The clinics are going to create jobs. As I had mentioned before, we're going to need people that can school people on how they can shop and maneuver their way through a supermarket. They're going to uh, learn uh, healthier selections for the same amount of money. Or they're also going to learn how they can take their food stamps and also purchase with the same amount of money healthier food selections. Then they have to know how to prepare these foods in a quick, efficient manner. So they're going to have to be able to produce uh, uh, quick, healthy meals. A lot of the classes are going to be focused on that. They might even be actually tied together. You can show people, well, here's your shopping list. right? That's pretty easy to do. And that can be handed out to people or available on, on the internet. Okay. Then we need to give them a, a list of healthy meals that they can produce from the foods that they're shopping with. So there will be cooking classes ongoing every single day that is going to be creating jobs by nutritionists and cooks, etc. People might be using this as part-time jobs to uh, supplement. Maybe they only have a part-time job right now and they need full-time job. So people that are um, w working, um, th that are not making enough money, they need a supplemental job and they can actually take one of these. Uh, moving ahead, we're going to have them take the same amount of money that they have now for their food bill, whether they're spending their own money or if they're on the food stamp program, we have to show them that they can buy healthy foods that cost the same amount. With the food stamp program, you can see how I, we can create additional jobs by doing this as well. It might be that we'll have to give them some sort of a discount to buy local and organic fruits and vegetables. Local and organic. Now, I don't have all the details of this figured out, but if we can give them a discount with their food stamps, it's going to motivate them to buy more fruits and vegetables um, that are, let's say, organic and let's say locally produced so they can take it home and, and prepare it for the, themselves and their family. Well, that is also going to uh, result in local jobs, additional jobs and preservation of local jobs because small local farms will have um, increased production and demand because now they're producing these, these foods that are for the local communities. Uh, in addition to that, we can also show people gardening techniques if they have this ability. It's going to be through school gardening programs which already exist, and I'll give you some details in a minute on that. It can be a community or boosting up community gardens, and we can also have classes on container gardening. So possibly local farmers that are already good at this can, as a part-time job if needed, come into these clinics that we're setting up around the country and school people on individual gardening or container gardening at home, 
uh, boosting up community gardens, and also maybe being employed by the school systems to increase the number of schools that have their own school gardens. And basically, we're talking about vegetable gardens now. Okay, so it's going to be focused on food and, and vegetable gardening. Of course, you could spin that off and do flower gardens as well, but because of this entire system here that's tied into the, the health care reform, we're going to focus on vegetable gardening. On colder climates, then maybe we'll have to do some indoor work. Maybe there'll have to be greenhouses, et cetera. And some of the federal stimulus money that's coming in for, let's say, infrastructure and schools could go into greenhouse manufacturing, which would, again, create jobs. And then these gardens would have to be created. So now you're creating local jobs by gardeners and nutritionists, et cetera, that can tie this in as well. So you can see now there's a job creation portion of this. If you back up to the Massachusetts program and the life sciences bill, that was more of drug research bill and setting up uh, startup companies, et cetera, for more research on pharmaceuticals and genetics. Okay. That's going to be higher paying jobs. You can see with the job creation portion of my program here, what we're trying to do is set up jobs that are available to the average person. Okay. So it's not a $150,000 job. These could be part-time jobs by the personal trainers and exercise physiologists, by the nutritionists and um, the gardeners, the local farmers and gardeners, et cetera. They'll be coming in and teaching the classes. They might be going to the communities as well to set up these community gardens. They might be going to the schools as well to set up the school gardens. A couple of the websites that I'd like to uh, let you know about uh, that talk about school gardens right now, one is called citysprouts.org. Another one is csgn.org, which was short for the California School Gardening Network. Another one is simply schoolgardens.org, and there were many, many others. All I did is I went into a search engine, I put in school gardens, and all kinds of things popped up. So the information and the education is already out there. My program here, what we're trying to do is bring this to the masses as best we can. So tying that back in, what, what I would propose is, well, of course, we're talking about prevention. We're going to be preventing these diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and obesity. We're going to be saving money on the medical insurance costs that we ha have right now. And obviously, as we save money on these Medicare and Medicaid programs, we can take that money into making sure that everybody becomes insured. Premiums should come down because we're shelling out less money to these chronic diseases that cost a whole lot of money, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and obesity. The funding will be multifactorial. The, the main part of the funding right now to set up these clinics, these health clinics, will come from federal stimulus money, which will go into supplying these clinics with uh, staffing them with all of the educators that we were going to need, uh, a public information and education campaign to let everybody know that the clinics are available to them, and then the job creation portion of this is creating all the jobs that I had prior discussed on here, which is going to be all of those jobs that, uh, that people need. Okay. Now, why did I mention uh, the chiropractic portion of this, too? Uh, a lot of the common phone calls that come into primary care physicians' offices um, and chiropractic offices, physical therapy offices, are for spinal pain syndromes. If we continue to preserve chiropractic benefit in the Medicare program, which has been there by the, since the 70s, by the way, since the 1970s, Medicare has paid for chiropractic care for musculoskeletal conditions. My proposal to you, as you, the legislators that are watching this, um, DVD and, and the show, is we want to preserve chiropractic benefit as we move ahead in the medical insurance reform. And here's why. We know that chiropractic can save us money on medical insurance. And we know that uh, patient satisfaction rates with chiropractic is very high. Chiropractic has been shown in the medical research to save money. And it's also more effective than long-term medications for just now. I'm just going to talk musculoskeletal for spinal pain syndromes. Let me just give you one piece of research right now that was very important. First portion of research was back in July of 2003, um, which was 
chronic spinal pain, what they did is they took a group of patients, put them under chiropractic care, another group under acupuncture, and another group with medications. 